Hello and welcome to the CPC Certification Review Training with Legacy. This training is designed to assist you in passing the CPC certification exam. This course is not designed for beginners. You should understand the coding process prior to taking this review. The 20,000 series will ask six questions that will hone in on surgical procedures performed on the musculoskeletal system from head to toe. Specifically, these areas include the head, neck, back, and flank, spine, abdomen, shoulder, arm, hand, and fingers, pelvis and hip, legs, foot, and toes. The skeletal system provides the framework of the body. It consists of 206 bones, joints, and cartilage providing protection and support to body organs. The two main parts of the skeleton are the axial and appendicular skeletons. The axial skeleton is comprised of the bones of the head, neck, and trunk. The appendicular skeleton consists of the bones of the limbs, including those forming the shoulder and pelvic girdles. Laterality is an important concept of ICD-10-CM and is particularly prevalent in the musculoskeletal system. Typically, you will find that the right side is identified in the diagnosis code with the number 1, the left side is identified with the number 2, and bilateral conditions are identified with the number 3. When laterality is not documented, the code is billed as unspecified. Per the ICD-10-CM guidelines, if a bilateral option is not available for the diagnosis code, two codes will be reported, one for the right side and one for the left. Also from the ICD-10-CM guidelines, when a patient has a bilateral condition, the diagnosis is coded as bilateral even if only one side is being treated at that specific encounter. Other diagnosis codes commonly used in the diagnosis and treatment of musculoskeletal conditions include those listed here. Additional codes that are common in the musculoskeletal system are found in Chapter 19, Injuries and Poisonings. A sprain is an injury to a ligament when the joint is carried through a range of motion greater than normal but there is no dislocation or fracture. The difference between a sprain and a strain is that a ligament is injured in a sprain while a muscle is injured and or spasming in a strain. There are also various types of fractures that impact code selection. Please take a moment to review. The type of fracture reviewed on the previous slide differs from the type of fracture treatment. Fracture treatment can be closed, open, or percutaneous. Closed treatment does not surgically expose the fracture site for treatment. Fractures are treated by manipulation and or casting. Open treatment involves surgically opening the fracture site and visually examining the bone to repair the fracture. Percutaneous fixation involves placing pins through the skin into the bone to stabilize the fracture site. This type of treatment is neither open or closed. The other important guideline for fracture treatment is found in the guidelines at the beginning of the musculoskeletal system. Fracture treatment includes application and removal of the first cast or traction device only. Subsequent casts or traction devices may be separately billable. We suggest that you circle or highlight the type of treatment under every fracture and or dislocation section and underline the specific bones. The musculoskeletal CPT section is organized by anatomical site from the head down to the toes. Within each anatomic site, the codes are divided based on the type of procedure being performed, such as incision, excision, fractures, and so on. Care should be taken to read all notes, guidelines, and parenthetical statements carefully as they will help to guide code selection. Wound exploration codes relate to wounds resulting from penetrating trauma. These codes describe surgical exploration, an enlargement of the wound, extension of dissection, debridement, 
removal of foreign body, ligation or coagulation of minor subcutaneous and or muscular blood vessels of the subcutaneous tissue, muscle fascia, and or muscle, not requiring thoracotomy or laparotomy. Here's a tip. If repair is done to major structures or major blood vessels requiring a thoracotomy or a laparotomy, then those specific codes would supersede the use of codes in the wound exploration section. Also, to report the repair of the wounds, simple, intermediate, or complex repair, use codes in the integumentary system section. Take care when reviewing the excision and biopsy codes. Codes are selected based on the depth of the tissue biopsied, muscle or bone, and how the biopsy is completed, open, needle, trocar, etc. Under the introduction or removal section, codes include injections and removals of foreign bodies. Parenthetical statements underneath the codes provide information regarding use of radiology, contrast injections, and materials to be injected. Trigger points are painful knots of muscles that are tight and do not relax. Codes are available for injections into the muscles with medication, code range 20552 through 20553, and without medication, code range 20560 through 20561. Codes are billed based on the number of muscles treated, not based on the number of injections given. For example, if three injections are done into one muscle, we only bill for treatment of one trigger point. Here's a coding tip. Make a note next to the trigger point injections reminding you that these are based on the number of muscles, not the number of injections used. The spine is divided into three sections, cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. The cervical area includes seven vertebra. The first two cervical vertebra are C1, also known as the atlas, and C2, also known as the axis. The cervical vertebra collectively are referred to as C1 through C7. The thoracic vertebra come next, and there are 12 thoracic vertebra. They are referred to as T1 through T12. The lumbar vertebra come next, and there are five of them, known as L1 through L5. At times, operative reports can specify areas involving portions of more than one group of vertebra. For example, if a procedure was performed on C6 through T3, the vertebra included would be C6, C7, T1, T2, and T3, or five vertebra. The vertebra are also referred to as segments in many of the CPT codes. The space between the vertebra contains an intervertebral disc, also known as an interspace. Looking at spinal instrumentation, there are two basic types of instrumentation seen, segmental and non-segmental. Segmental instrumentation attached to the vertebra by individual segments, while non-segmental indicates a single rod that is attached at the top and the bottom without any attachments to individual vertebra in between. A bone excision is the removal of a portion or growth of bone. This is called an osteotomy. The key concepts for bone excisions include anatomic site and complexity. Complexity in this context can include whether the method is complete or partial. Osteotomy services include the concept of columns. There are three columns to a vertebra or spinal segment. The columns are anterior, middle, and posterior column. When coding for spinal osteotomy procedures, a portion of the vertebral segment is cut and removed in preparation for realigning the spine as part of a spinal deformity correction and are coded from code range 22206 through 2226. Coding from these codes requires documentation of the site, approach, and number of vertebral segments. Codes for obtaining bone, fascia, bone marrow, and other tissue graphs are separately reportable, as is the use of instrumentation. Instrumentation associated with vertebral column services is separately reportable according to the guidelines. Arthrodesis, also known as spinal fusion, is also separately reportable in addition to the primary procedure. 
Arthrodesis services are billed with modifier 51 to indicate multiple or additional surgical services. Finally, these services are commonly performed by two surgeons, both acting as primary on different parts of the surgical procedure. Each surgeon will report her specific procedure and append modifier 62 to indicate two surgeons to her work. Vertebroplasty is the repair of a vertebra or the rounded portion of the segment which has been fractured. A bone cement is injected under imaging guidance to reinforce the structure. Similarly, vertebral augmentation injects bone cement into the vertebra that has suffered from a compression fracture. However, prior to the injection of cement, the vertebra are lifted and separated to create a cavity between the bones and place them back into a normal anatomical position. The important keys to note when billing for vertebroplasty include the number of levels or segments being repaired and the specific portion of the spine, for example, cervical, thoracic, or lumbar. Per the guidelines, imaging guidance is not separately billable. And per the codes, the codes are all defined as unilateral or bilateral, making modifier 50 not billable with these codes. According to fracture guidelines, the first cast or traction device placed is included in the surgical services. Replacement casts during follow-up or aftercare are separately billable, as is the casting material, which can be found in the HICPIX book. Casting or strapping may also be billed without the fracture treatment service if done to stabilize or protect the fracture and or to provide temporary relief to the patient. The final section of the muscular skeletal code section relates to endoscopy and arthroscopy. Endoscopy is a minimally invasive surgical procedure in which a small camera is placed into a body area or cavity for examination and sometimes treatment of damaged body areas. Arthroscopy is an endoscopy procedure, but it is specifically into a joint using an arthroscope. As with any endoscopy services, all surgical, also known as therapeutic services, include diagnostic services. Diagnostic services are those in which the physician only looks at the joint. If the physician finds something that she opts to treat, the service is no longer diagnostic and becomes surgical or therapeutic. The diagnostic service is no longer billable. Many of these joint repair services can be billed as either open incisional services or as arthroscopic services. Key words in the operative report, such as scope or port placed, will alert the coder to an arthroscopic service. Further, watch the parenthetical statements below the codes that indicate when the services are included in others. Orthopedic supplies are dispensed by durable medical equipment providers, also known as DME. Codes are found in the HICPIX Level 2 codebook and include items such as crutches, canes, walkers, traction devices, wheelchairs, and other orthopedic supplies like orthotics. Thank you for joining us for this review. If you would like more details about our intensive CPC training or any of our other training programs, please visit our website at medicalbillco.com.